everyone, it's Haley, and today is Bookmas Day 6, so I'm going to be talking about the worst books that I read in 2019. So a couple of things. One, today is also the day that I discovered that my countdown has been wrong for all the videos I've been pre-filming today, so the past days of Bookmas, all the countdown is wrong because I was like, oh, if it's day whatever, then there must be this many days, but I forgot that the day doesn't correspond with the date. How confusing. But today I figured it out, so yay! But today is also a day that I kind of hesitate, to be honest, to do this video every year. I don't think I've done it in a couple of years, and that's just because I don't want anyone to think I hate these books or I think they're bad books, because I don't. It's just my own personal enjoyment of them. I didn't like them. So I'm sorry for the disclaimer because I know so many of you guys hate it, but I don't feel comfortable doing this video without that being said. It's nothing against the authors, it's nothing against the books themselves, they just weren't for me, and that's okay. That happens, but I thought you guys might still be interested in hearing about the books that I didn't like that I read this year. So let's get into the list. So unlike Bookmas Day 2 where I talked about my top 10 books of the year, I'm not going to be ranking this list. This is just in random order and a lot of these books I actually don't own anymore because generally if I don't like a book I end up unhauling it. So I'm actually going to start off with the books that I do own. So first up is Saw Kill Girls by Claire Legrand. I have been hoping to love this book but you guys know by now that a major thing with me is if a book is confusing, I just can't get behind it. I don't like being confused and like I said, maybe I'm just dumb. I don't know. But this was definitely a case of me being very confused while reading this. So because I was confused, I had a hard time getting into the story and invested in the characters and I just found the overall story to be a little dry and dull and that's why I didn't like it. Next is Wicked Fox by Kat Cho. This is one of the bookmarked books of the month month and there's actually two on this list. We had kind of a streak there of bad luck and I actually talked about this in my last bookmas video mentioning a book that I would have DNF'd if I didn't have to read it and this is definitely one of them. So many people were talking about this book and so many people loved it and I thought that it seemed like such a cool concept. Like the main character is a nine-tailed fox, like everything about that sounds amazing but unfortunately it was a lot. It took a very long time for the story to actually get going and then once it did I didn't feel like it gave me what I was hoping for. I felt like it was going to be kind of like a superhero-esque story with a lot of Korean culture in it and it did have a lot of Korean culture in it but I don't think that I got the action that I was hoping for. I feel like instead it was kind of going this way and then that way without explanation. There wasn't really a reason for anything. So ultimately the story ended up being really flat and only reaching the surface surface level. It didn't delve deeper into what the plot line could have been. A lot of people have said that this book is like a K-drama and maybe that's why I didn't like it just because I'm not really into the soap opera thing. It's just not for me but I know there are a lot of people out there that did like this book and I'm very happy for them. It just wasn't for me. Next is The Wedding Date by Jasmine Gilroy. This was one of the adult romances that I delved into this year. That is a genre that I very much got into and this was definitely a disappointing one. So I thought that The Wedding was going to to be so much more of this book, but the wedding was over very quickly. It follows a boy who has just broken, not really a boy, a man, but you know what I mean. It follows a guy who is going to this wedding and his ex-girlfriend is going to be there, but he doesn't have a date. So then he meets the main character in the elevator and they decide that they're going to go to this wedding together. So then he won't have to go alone, but that is like over like that. And then the rest of the story is over a longer period of time. And I just kind of wanted like a cute fluffy wedding story. I wanted the wedding to be more prevalent. My main issue with this I think is that I found it to be very forgettable and that came from the fact that I couldn't connect with the characters and therefore I didn't care for their romance plot line. It didn't do a lot for me and it was just kind of a lot of missed potential. Next is A Curse So Dark and Lonely by Bridget Kimmermer. This is a, once again a book that I had heard tons of great things about. A lot of the books on this list actually were pretty hyped up and this is a Beauty and the Beast retelling featuring Disability Rep which is one of the things I think it did very well. I think it was a good Beauty and the Beast retelling and the disability rep was great and something that needs to be seen more often, but the story itself had a lot thrown into it that didn't make sense. It was like this and that and it didn't 
connect and just left me feeling like I had whiplash. With so many things thrown in and a lot going on, that left me with a one-dimensional story because I never got to connect to the characters or their plot line. And it also left me feeling bored, which might seem weird because I said that there was so much in this book, but I still felt like, well, there was a lot, there also wasn't that much happening. And I just kind of felt like I wanted the book to be done. So I don't really know why I didn't DNF it ultimately, but I mean, it was okay. Like a lot of these books on this list are just okay. A lot of them I gave three stars, two stars, none of them are one stars. And that's because I started DNFing this year. Next is Hello Girls by Brittany Cavallaro and Emily Henry. I have read a book by both of the authors in this author duo, so I was very excited for this book, but it kind of sold a Thelma and Louise sort of storyline and hooked you with that, but then didn't live up to it. So it's about two characters who are best friends who come from very crappy home situations, and they always talk about running away together, and they never know when they're going to do it. And then finally, they decide to do it, they steal a car and take off headed for Las Vegas. This story required a lot of suspension of disbelief and that was kind of difficult for me. Not that I generally struggle with that, it was just in this case. So while it had an intriguing plot line, it never really lived up to it. I cared about the characters but I felt like one was focused on more than the other so it was hard for me to kind of care about them both, especially because both characters had very similar voices. I think that the authors kind of had a bit too similar of writing to do two characters. I don't know if like one wrote one character and one wrote the other, that's kind of what I'm assuming, but ultimately I kept on getting the two characters confused the entire time. The story felt pretty forced and I think I came to realize that once I got to the end and that that's when I realized I kind of was reading a lackluster story that I had just been hoping it would live up to that hooking plot line and it just never really did. Next is another book that we read for Bookmarked and the live show for this one was very interesting but that is I Was Born For This by Alice Oseman. So all of us read Radio Silence and loved it so we had high expectations but I Was Born For This was it was weird. If you want to watch the live show, I'll link it down below as well as the one for Wicked Fox. <laughs> they're just like, they're both very interesting. But this book is about fangirling and fan culture and it is told in dual perspective. So one is from the singer in this band that is very, very famous. And then the other perspective is from a girl who is a huge fan of that band and she's about to meet them for the first time. Speaking of a book that required suspension of disbelief, wow, did this book ever. There were so many things that I was like, that wouldn't happen. Happen. Why is that happening? Like what? Which led to a very confusing story and me just kind of being like, what is going on the entire time I was reading it? It was really just all over the place, which left me feeling all over the place. And I, yeah, it's hard for me to describe how I felt about this book because it was such a weird reading experience. And finally is Serpent and Dove by Shelby Mahurin. I'm really sad to include this on this list because it's a book that I really wanted to love. So many people have and that's why I picked it up. And I mean, another part of that is the main character shares a last name with me. So I was like, oh, who are you? And I did actually really like that character, but this was once again a case of missed potential. This is a witch story that is set in France in the 1800s, I believe. And from what I had heard, I was expecting sassy characters, banter, and a really steamy great romance. And that just wasn't what I felt like I had got. I was bored. The reason I didn't DNF this one though is because everyone was like, oh, once you get past 100 pages, it gets better. Oh, once you get past 200 pages, it gets better. So I just kept on reading because I was like, people keep on saying that it gets better and it just never got better. And I'm so, uh, I'm really sad about that. But I did try. I gave it my best shot because I did finish it, even though I kind of didn't want to. So those are all of the worst books that I read in 2019. Overall, it really wasn't that bad of a reading year. Like I said, most of these books are like three, two stars, which isn't that bad of a rating, but they definitely fall at the end of my reading list for the year. I hope that if you have read any of these books, you enjoyed them more than I did, but I also hope that you enjoyed today's video. So don't forget to click that subscribe button and then click that bell icon so you'll be notified whenever I post. I'm posting 21 new videos over the course of December, so you don't want to miss any of those. You can also follow me on all of my social media. All of my handles and links and all that stuff is down below for you guys. So thank you so much for watching and I will see you guys in my next video. Bye!